Nobody cares about movies anymore. No one goes to the cinema. No one really watches network TV. Everyone's watching Netflix. This show should just be me coming out and saying, well done Netflix, you win. Everything. Ricky Gervais' speech at the Golden Globes a couple days ago was not only an epic takedown of Hollywood and the TV industry, but also it was really great marketing. Um, and it's something that I think we're going to see a lot more of in 2020 and the new decade. And I wanted to make this video to explain why that is. Now, if you didn't see the speech, I'll read off a few of my favorite lines for you. This is the last time I'm hosting these awards. I don't care anymore. I'm joking, I never did. NBC clearly don't care either. Kevin Hart was fired from the Oscars because of some offensive tweets. Lucky for me, the Hollywood foreign press can barely speak English and they've no idea what Twitter is. I got offered this gig by fax. Spoiler alert, season two is on the way, so in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. Apple roared into the TV game with The Morning Show, a super drama about the importance of dignity and doing the right thing, made by a company that runs sweatshops in China. You say you're woke, but the companies you work for, it's unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney. If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent. So if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a platform to make a political speech. You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So if you win, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and F off. So naturally his speech was hilarious to watch and even more hilarious by the fact that he was giving this speech to a bunch of Hollywood and TV people who were in the audience who were like sitting there looking agonized trying to pretend that they found it funny. But entertainment value aside, I wanted to comment on why I found this so compelling from a marketing perspective. Now, I knew of Ricky Gervais before and I kind of wrote him off. Uh, I, I saw like one or two episodes of the British version of The Office and I didn't think it was very good. I saw a little bit of, of his stand-up comedy and I thought it was kind of boring. But now, despite having written him off in the past, well, now he's definitely got my attention. And I think a lot of people probably feel the same way. So as an entertainer, uh, railing against his own industry it might seem like something risky to do, but uh, I think it'll work out for him in the long run. And there's three reasons, three particular parts parts of his speech that I think made for such compelling content. Number one is that he's taking shots at an institution that used to be powerful but now is basically old and dying. But they're not so far along yet that everybody is taking shots at them. He's one of the early adopters, so to speak. He's recognizing this trend in the future and he's getting on early. And I think he's entirely correct when he says that Netflix is completely destroying uh, regular TV and Hollywood. And YouTube is too, actually. Netflix is kind of taking the pure entertainment side and YouTube is taking the kind of valuetainment, so-called. Uh, people who actually want to learn are, are going to YouTube. And almost nobody is going to traditional TV or movies anymore. So basically he's positioning himself in the future by going where the future trends dictate and he's making a big name for himself and a scandal which gets a lot of media attention in the present. So instead of people seeing Ricky Gervais and associating him with that old and dying Hollywood institution, well, now they're going to associate him with the opposite. He is the, the death bringer of the, or death declarer at least, of the, the old institution uh, and it's going to be associated with the new one. So the lesson to be learned from that is that if you were trying to market something, if you were trying to position yourself as a brand, well, don't position yourself alongside an institution that is on the downtrend. Put yourself alongside something that is on the uptrend, something that is, that is going to be bigger in the future. And if you can make yourself kind of look like a courageous revolutionary in the process, and even better. Okay, number two is that he's identifying himself with the common man and calling out a lot of behavior from elite institutions that normal people hate. In particular, the annoying virtue signaling by companies and by actors when he calls out Apple uh, for telling other people how to live their lives while they're, they're you know, installing nets on their factories in China to catch the people that are trying to commit suicide because their working conditions are so bad. That's real, look it up. And then all the actors that come to the award show in their private jets to lecture people about saving the environment. Most of us find that kind of behavior really annoying and really hypocritical.
By the way, if you're enjoying this video, could you please do me a little favor, hit the thumbs up button because it makes a YouTube algorithm like me better. And then if you want more like this in the future, if you want to learn how to be free and successful in your life, then hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button so you'll get notified whenever I have a new video that comes out. And we, the normal people, are the consumers of Hollywood content and of movies and of Netflix and of all this stuff. So uh, by alienating us, by, by pretending to be high and mighty, uh, these people who pretend to be other people for a living are shooting their own income source in the foot. And so Ricky Gervais did a great job in, in taking advantage of this golden opportunity to point out the hypocrisy of these people and point out how annoying they are to normal people. So, so Ricky Gervais in this, in this instance has kind of framed himself as the champion of the common man because he realizes that none of us care uh, what some TV actors try to lecture us to about politics or about the environment. And of course, it's the same thing with companies. I mean, you don't want to buy an iPhone to be lectured by some corporate diversity officer or something like that about how we should live our lives. Everybody sees through that. Everybody sees how empty that is, how hypocritical that is, how ridiculous it would be uh, for us to get moral guidance from a company that makes cell phones. I think that this trend of corporations positioning themselves as moral authorities, which obviously they never have any moral courage at all, right? They're just aligning themselves always with whatever the, the popular belief happens to be at the time. Uh, I think this trend is going to die because people are starting to see through it. People are starting to find it annoying and hypocritical. And with all these, all these new channels that are more decentralized, there are a lot of people uh, not just the occasional Ricky Gervais, that are going to call out this behavior and they're going to ridicule this behavior and it's going to hurt the company's public relations instead of helping it like it might have done in the past. But anyway, there's a huge part of the population that is extremely annoyed by the constant virtue signaling. So if you can call that out when you see it, well, that's going to gain you the sympathy of a lot of people. Okay, now the third thing that I pulled out of this speech that I thought was great marketing was that he used what's basically an anti-establishment internet meme in one of his lines, and that was that Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Now, if you're not familiar with the story of Jeffrey Epstein, let me give you the really short version. Jeffrey Epstein was a rich and famous guy with a lot of rich and famous friends, including a lot of people in Hollywood and the Clintons. And he owned his own island, and he had children shipped in for he and his friends to have sex with. So finally, he got caught with this pedophile island scheme and got put in jail. And then there's some investigation into his friend's involvement with this. I think I might be getting some of the details wrong here. But anyway, uh, Jeffrey Epstein was found hanged in his prison cell. And the official story is that he hanged himself. And curiously, the camera footage in the prison was removed for that time that he supposedly hung himself. So given all these very suspicious circumstances, uh, a lot of people naturally think that Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. He was murdered and they try to frame it as though he killed himself. So there's been this trend on the internet to uh, like write some long essay or something or a long comment on something and end it with, oh, by the way, Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. It's basically become this widespread internet meme, and Ricky Gervais said exactly the same thing in his speech. Now, aside from the fact that this is totally embarrassing to Hollywood because Jeffrey Epstein was basically one of their own, he was one of their insiders, uh, and he got caught with a pedophile island, uh, apart from that, this is really good marketing because he is listening to the people. Now, the way that Hollywood usually works, and all of these dying institutions for that matter, the, the news media and TV and, and Hollywood and the school system, it's always top down, right? It's like, we tell you what to think, uh, our, our bosses, our CEOs make the decisions about what we're gonna say, and then you better like it. And the internet is killing that model. Right? That model is dying, and uh, the people that are successful marketers in the new millennium are the people who, who listen to what people are interested in and then talk about that. So that's exactly what Ricky Gervais is doing. He's not, he's not trying to invent his own meme. He's not trying to force some virtue signaling on everybody like the companies are doing and like the other actors are doing. What he's doing is taking something that people are already interested in and talking about that.
So I really think that this is the way of the future and you're gonna see a lot more of this in the future. So if you wanna be effective in your marketing, there's three lessons to be learned from that. One is to take shots at dying institutions, but you know, don't be late to the game, right? Don't, don't be the last person to take shots at the dying institutions after everybody already is, right? Don't be the guy that's, that's you know, talking trash about the Flat Earth Society. It's just, it's not gonna gain you any points. Right, because uh, almost nobody believes that the Earth is flat anymore. So if you're if you're saying how superior you are to these flat Earth society people, well, it's just it just doesn't work, right? You're you're following exactly what the orthodox belief is. If you want to if you want to seem like you're some sort of maverick, well, you have to you have to fight something that that holds a little bit of power. But thankfully, there are a lot of opportunities here, and I think this is a very good development, as I've talked about multiple times, that Hollywood is dying, that network TV is dying, that the uh, college education system is dying, that the news media is dying, right? There are all these institutions that, that are dying, uh, which, in my opinion, are very harmful to people's happiness and purpose in life. I mean, I've talked about this all the time, that if, if you listen to what your college professors say, if you watch the news, if you watch TV, um, you're going to be programming yourself with beliefs that are going to hold you back and make you miserable. And that doesn't always mean the alternatives are better, right? I mean, I, I think there's a lot of crap on Netflix, too, and I think it's fair to point that out. But I'm just saying that trashing old and dying institutions, especially if they're old and dying institutions because they fail to serve the public interest, well, that's just good marketing, and you're helping people to uh, lift themselves out of the brainwashing by these old and dying institutions and therefore live better lives. And of course, if you're going to call out behavior that people hate, uh, and especially if you're the only one that's call calling out this kind of pervasive behavior, if you're the first person to say that the emperor has no clothes, uh, well, a lot of people are going to recognize your right and come on board and you're going to kind of be a leader in that movement. And then last is to use memes to your advantage or use what people are talking about already and add your voice to that conversation because if people are already talking about it, it means that people are interested in it and you should get in on that. Speaking of which, I'm always interested to know what you guys think. So uh, let me know what you think about what Ricky Gervais had to say. Let me know in the comments below. Tell me what your thoughts are. Do you agree with him? Do you disagree with him? Uh, are you triggered and offended? <laughs> let me know in the comments. If you like this video, I think you'd also really like this video about how exactly Hollywood programs you to fail. And of course, if you think that this would be useful or entertaining to somebody else, then uh, please share this video. Thanks guys, till next time.